So I've been a big fan of Pixar's short films that they play before their feature films since I was a little kid and I got a DVD of all of them. I was so mystified by how well some of these stories could be told with no dialogue. And hell, a lot of them were really funny. So I try to keep tabs on when they actually do release these short films. And while they don't always release them before their features, they just sort of gave up at Toy Story 4 for some reason. There's actually a lot more of these than you might realize. With Disney Plus crapping out content every day, a million cars and Toy Story shorts and pretty consistent supplementary shorts that come as bonus features on Blu-rays and DVDs, this Wikipedia page with the full list is not a short one. But I was determined to make this video. I was going to watch every single one. Kind of. You see, I wanted this to be a good video and I feel like for a lot of people, a good video is not just me talking about how much I don't like the Cars franchise. And there are a lot of Cars shorts. So I decided to make some ground rules before I started this marathon, just to narrow down what shorts I would be watching. One, I will watch every short made by Pixar that got a theatrical release or played before any movie, and that includes any Pixar shorts that played before non-Pixar movies, which exists. Two, I will watch all of the feature-related home-released shorts, and that includes the few that are on Disney+. Plus. Three, I will watch all of the experimental shorts that Pixar made in their early years. Four, I will not watch any shorts that are non-Pixar, but played before Pixar movies. So I'm not gonna watch that 20 minute long Olaf short that played before Coco because why would I do that to myself? Five, no television premieres, which means anything that played on the Disney Channel or Toon Disney exclusively, I'm not gonna watch. Sixth and finally, I'm not gonna watch any of the Disney Plus series. I don't think Spark Shorts counts in that, so I am going to be watching those because they're all original short films and I think that they're worth watching. So I won't be reviewing Forky Asks a Question or Pixar Popcorn, but honestly, I watched a few episodes of each and I don't have much to say. They would both end up towards the bottom of the list anyway. They were kind of boring. I'm sorry, Forky fans. <laughs> He's not for me. So without further ado, let's just get into it. There's 55 of these, which means that this video is probably really long. <laughs> I'm gonna go worst to best here. I don't think there's any other good way to do a ranking video. Uh, and especially because once we get to the top 15 or so, these things get really great. Let's get started. At number 55 on my list is George and AJ. I'm gonna start this very strong here. George and AJ, literally just ruins the movie up. Of course, that's a bit of an overstatement here, but I truly think this is the least remarkable of all of the Pixar shorts in terms of animation and storytelling. There's actually a few instances of this with Pixar where they'll put two different tie-in shorts as bonus features on the DVD of the movie, and one of them will be really charming and cute, and the other one is not. It's clearly the one that got scrapped, but they still kind of just threw it together anyway. There's not really much to say about this one, so I'll be brief. Essentially, George and AJ are the two guys at the beginning of Up who help Mr. Fredrickson move, and we get to see how they react to him flying away on balloons. How fun. It's so boring. It's, it's so, it's so unfunny. Then, and here's the part that ruins Up, they show a bunch of other old people driving their houses away with different weird objects. Doesn't that just make Carl's story a little less special to you? I don't know, it's just not really a concept I think was ever worth exploring, and when paired with this crappy Flash animation, it just rubs me the wrong way. And then they get the guy who voices Emile the Rat to play Russell at the end. Mr. Fredrickson? <laughs> that was so cool! Let's do that again, Mr. Fredrickson, but next time, I wanna steal- I don't know, it's just really cringe. I'm done talking about this one. I, it's just not good at all. I even hated it as a kid, and I had crappy taste when I was a kid. Coming in at 54 on my list is Air Mater. Now on to one I have incredibly strong opinions on. Air Mater! This is one short in a series of shorts called Mater's Tall Tales. <laughs> I'm lying, I'm crying. Oh god. I know I said I wasn't going to review these, but there are a few that make it onto the list because they were either released theatrically or as bonus features. This was a bonus feature for Cars 2. Yikes. So I don't think Cars is a very good franchise. I, I didn't like it as a kid, and now it just kind of baffles me that it exists. I don't think the writing is clever. I hate all of the characters, especially Mater. As a fan of stand-up comedy, it just irks me that they would give someone as hacky as Larry the Cable Guy a lead role in an animated film. Air Mater sort of serves as a tie-in to the Disney Toons animated film Planes, 
Remember, planes, me neither. The problem I have with Mater's Tall Tales is that they just suck. I genuinely can't imagine liking this if I loved cars. There's so little going on. They're just so boring, and they do so little with their concepts. The concept of this one is that Mater learns to fly, and then he flies with jets. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's it, and it's just really boring. Oh, also for all of Mater's Tall Tales, they couldn't get Owen Wilson to come in and do them, so they just got some random guy to come do an Owen Wilson impression, which proves my point that even if you think you can, no one can do a good Owen Wilson. Oh, wait a minute, that did not happen. I know you think you can do the wow. I know you think that you can do it. I'm so sorry. You can't. Uh, 53 on my list is Tokyo Mater. Wow, another Mater's Tall Tales. Hey! If I am lying, then I am crying. What does that mean? Tokyo Mater is also quite bad, uh, but the reason that I put it above Air Mater is that it's just batshit insane. It's literally just Mater goes to Tokyo and does Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. And is it funny? No, except for the scene where this cop goes to a donut store and says, I love donuts. That's really funny. Donuts. I love donuts. Always down for some good trite cop jokes, like unironically, keep them coming. <laughs> this one was theatrically released with Bolt, which is my worst nightmare. I would hate to be in that theater. And, and the weird thing is, I'm pretty sure I saw Bolt in theaters, and I don't remember this short playing before, but maybe it's just merged with my memories of Cars 2. But anyway, that's why I have to watch it, because it released theatrically. Also, at the end when Mater wins his race, they just sort of sit there and revel in their success for a little too long, but hey, it was just enough time for me to jump out of the window of a 10-story building. But I didn't, because I still had a bunch of Pixar shorts to watch, and at least there aren't any more Cars shorts. At 52 on my list is Miss Fritter's Racing School from Cars 3. Are you kidding me? So technically, I don't think that Miss Fritter's Racing School should be qualified as a short because it really just feels like a deleted scene from Cars 3 that they decided to put on the Blu-ray and it's only like a minute long. Pixar. You know you guys, like, don't have to do the shorts on the Blu-ray. You've made some amazing ones. Some of them are very high on my list, but you just, if you don't want to, why even bother? 51 on my list is Marine Life Interviews. Here's my impression of Pixar moments before making Marine Life Interviews. <clears throat> Him. Oh, shit, we forgot to make a short for Finding Dory, quick! Just have him say the jokes they said again in the movie, but to a camera this time, like it's a documentary now! Number 50 on my list is Smash and Grab. So in 2019, Pixar started releasing a series of shorts called Spark Shorts, where they had a few animators at Pixar create original short films on a limited budget and time frame, and put them on YouTube. A few of these shorts are some of the most creative shorts I've ever seen from Pixar, and are quite high on this list. This was such a great idea, and was reminiscent of the early years of Pixar, and it clearly let certain artists get really creative and make some of my favorite short films, well, ever? Like I said, some of these are quite high on my list, as you'll see. And some of them are not. It's a really mixed bag of shorts. The worst one, in my opinion, is Smash and Grab, and I feel really bad because I would really love for Pixar to do more Spark Shorts, and I don't want to just crap on them, but this one just is pretty boring. My biggest problem with it is that I genuinely just kind of forgot everything about it once it ended. I felt that it didn't have enough of a fleshed out relationship between these two robots for me to feel any of the stakes later in the film, and animation-wise, it just felt kind of weak. The environments just felt barren, but not intentionally so. I understand that there's a time crunch when it comes to these spark shorts, but I feel like Smash and Grab just wasn't quite there yet when it was released. It was also just kind of poorly paced and a rather boring watch overall. Coming in at number 49 on my list is Mr. Incredible and Pals. Listen, I, I don't hate Mr. Incredible and Pals, but I did hate it as a kid. You want to know why, though? because it really just wasn't made for me. It's a parody of old, cheap Saturday morning cartoons, and I just have no nostalgia for that whatsoever. I think that's why it falls flat. It just wasn't made for me. And I also think that if a parody only makes sense and is entertaining to people who know what the parody is based on, then maybe it's not a very good parody to begin with. But I don't want to go so hard on this one. It's just not for me. Hello, Editing Max here. I wanted to clarify something about Mr. Incredible and Pals. 
mostly so people don't comment it. So there's actually a commentary for this short film done by Craig T. Nelson and Samuel L. Jackson in character as Mr. Incredible and Frozone. This is a stain on my otherwise spotless endorsement record. You owe me one Incredible. I never saw this. And I'll be honest, it is quite funny, but it wasn't the one that I saw when I was a kid, nor is it the one that I ranked. Now I may have messed up, maybe I should have ranked this for the one with commentary, because obviously that one is way better than this and it does make fun of the badness that is Mr. Incredible and Pals. And I did want to emphasize that this short is technically bad on purpose. I actually did find a version of this short that was test animated by a couple of students at a Pixar internship and that version is very funny. I'll link it down below. Wait, wait, wait. Is that supposed to be me? I sound like a, 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 a what? A beatnik. Yeah, that's it. I sound like a beatnik. It was meant to sound cool. Well, it doesn't sound cool, and it doesn't sound like me. I sound cool. But it's not technically, officially a Pixar short, so it doesn't really count, but I did feel like mentioning it because it does make this short much better. I'm not gonna move it anywhere on the list, nor will I say where it would be because I don't think it's fair to judge it like that, but it felt like it was worth a mention. Anyway, back to the video. Kissies! 48 on this list might be my first hot take, uh, which is 20-something, there are a few concepts that I think are just inherently funny to everybody. And one of those concepts that always makes me laugh, and pretty much everyone laugh, is a bunch of kids stacked up in a trench coat. Literally, how could you make that not hilarious? Uh, unfortunately, I think that's what 20-something does. This is another spark short that probably could have benefited from some more time in script doctoring, because as a concept, it's great. It's just in its execution that I find it falls flat. Let me sort of explain. 20-something is about a girl going to a club with her friend, but that girl is three girls stacked on top of each other. One is 16 years old, one is 10 years old, and the other is one year old. And that is a very funny and clever concept, but the way it is executed, it's just very talking heavy, and once the slapstick comedy comes at you, it's kind of over before you know it. I wish it was funnier, I wish the story went outside of the club, and I wish they didn't just explain the metaphor at the end. Like, I get it. You don't have to tell me that it's an allegory for growing up. That's one of my least favorite things that movies do, is when they just over-explain how clever they're being. 47 is Nona. Nona has the same problem for me that 20-something has, which is that it just explains itself. It's about a grandma who watches WWE like she used to with her husband, who is dead, and it shows her literally in the ring with his ghost. And thanks, the picture of her husband sitting by her side and his general absence wasn't enough for me to gather that, I guess. I also just dislike the animation style for this one. It feels very... DreamWorks? Just look at this dog, he looked dumb as shit. I don't know, wasn't big on Nona. 46 on my list is Boundin. If there's one thing I've learned while writing this video, it's that people hate Boundin. And I guess I get it, it's kinda silly and thematically weak, although I feel like people dislike it for some of the wrong reasons. The theme, I guess, is fine. That being, don't let other people get you down and be yourself. But I also think if you look into the circumstances of the film, I disagree that that theme applies here. Here's a better theme that Boundin just ignores. How about don't let people take advantage of you and steal all your wool and make you look stupid? Stand up for yourself. I don't know, I'm also just not a big fan of the song or the aesthetics of this thing. It's never really been one of my favorites. Also, in terms of the timeline of Pixar short films, it's the first one with dialogue. And to go from really stellar visual storytelling to this, is pretty rough. 45 on my list is Mater and the Ghost Light. I know you're shocked. A Cars short that I don't really hate. I don't know, I'm rethinking this one. Maybe it should be lower. Let me just review it before I change my mind. Mater and the Ghost Light is actually not an episode of Mater's Tall Tales. No, 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 get out of here. It's just a short that was included on the DVD of the first Cars film. And the reason that it's above all of the other Mater shorts is that it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, which is a really low bar. Other than that, it's pretty boring. As I mentioned before, Mater is just not a good protagonist. There's also a comical record scratch. What is the ghost light? Bro, oh my. And I laughed out loud when that happened. John Lasseter, 
Fuck you, dude. Just for everything. 44 on my list is The Legend of Mordu. So unlike every YouTuber, I guess, I actually don't hate Brave. I think it's pretty good. Good. Granted, it's been like a while since I've seen it, so I probably could go for a rewatch, but in my memory, it's not like that awful. The Legend of Mordu, Brave's tie-in short, however, is pretty boring. <laughs> I know that's been my criticism for a lot of these films, but it's j it's just such a good one. The Legend of Mordu is just an explanation of the lore of Brave, and as much as I don't hate Brave, I guess, I also don't really care about its lore. Also, I know they were going for like a storybook tapestry retelling of the story, but the animation feels kind of cheap to me. I'm glad this exists for all you hardcore brave heads out there. Uh, as for me, though, I'm not all too impressed. 43 on my list is Small Fry. God, now I have to talk about the Toy Story shorts. I've made this easy for us. I've put all of the Toy Story tunes together on the list because they're all the same to me. I love the first three Toy Story films, and the third one was so successful that they decided to make some short films with those characters and the rest of the original gang. These were all played theatrically, and Small Fry, the worst of all of them, was actually played before the Muppets, yeah, the Jason Siegel one. Now, I love the Muppets. I feel like I've talked about them a lot in my videos, and I think that the Muppets 2011 was the first time the Muppets had been been done well in years. The songs are amazing by Brett McKenzie, it's hilarious, and overall it's just a great movie. Now Small Fry, on the other hand, is pretty annoying. It's about a Buzz Lightyear Happy Meal toy that replaces himself as Buzz and goes home to the toys, and he sucks. He's got a weird little accent, and he acts all self-aware. I, I, I've done some things that I'm not proud of. I've spent a lot of playtime thinking I was the prize that came with the meal. But at the end of the day, a self-aware Scrappy-Doo is still Scrappy-Doo. 42 on my list is Partysaurus Rex. Partysaurus Rex follows Rex, who all of the toys decidedly hate in this one, going to the bathtub and starting a party with all of the bath toys. Honestly, so little of importance happens in this one. It's really just scenes of Rex and all of these bath toys partying as Rex panics that the bath is going to overflow. But hey, it's well animated. And overall, is just kind of a vibe. I know that's not stunning media analysis, but again, there's so little to say about this one that uh, I feel like that's all there really is to say. Party Source Rex, kind of a vibe. Moving on. 41 on my list is Hawaiian Vacation. The best of these three rather nothing burger shorts is Hawaiian Vacation, in which Barbie and Ken were left behind on Bonnie's trip to Hawaii, and the toys create a vacation for them in Bonnie's room. This one is easily the best because it has some pretty decent stakes. It's all about making sure that Ken can propose to Barbie, and Barbie doesn't want to ruin his plans. Something I love about this one is that it was made well before Greta Gerwig's Barbie came out, but it still characterizes the two characters in a very similar way. 40 on my list is 22 versus Earth. Soul is probably the greatest Pixar film of the last decade. Its direction is superb, the animation is stellar, and story-wise, I think it's such a mature film that really lets the audience think. Pete Docter is easily one of my favorite directors and has been for some time. He has directed a lot of my favorite Pixar films. Unfortunately, the 22 vs. Earth doesn't quite stick the landing that Soul does so flawlessly. It shows 22 creating sort of a cult to get souls to not go down to Earth, and while I like the idea for a prequel story for 22, this short doesn't really do much with that idea. The score is great, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross know how to cook up some heat, but other than that, I just kind of left this one feeling very little, which I really can't say about the original film. Go watch Soul though, that shit will change your life. 39 on my list is actually the first Pixar short, The Adventures of Andre and Wally B. Ah, uh, what is there to say about the first ever Pixar short, The Adventures of Andre and Wally B? Um, on a story level, not much. This is so clearly more of a tech demonstration than actual short film, so I think it's pretty unfair to judge this for its story. Mind you, this thing was made in 1984, and for its time, this thing is really impressive. It's sort of a play on a traditional Looney Tunes cartoon, and trust me, that's not the only time in this video I'll be making that comparison. And while nothing really happens in this short, you have to admit that this short changed the trajectory of animated films forever. Without this, we would have never gotten Space Jam A New Legacy, 
and what a dark world that would be. 38 on my list is Sanjay's Super Team. I was really looking forward to Sanjay's Super Team when it was originally announced. It's based on the director's real life as a young Hindu boy who loved comic books and how he comes to appreciate his father's old-fashioned ways through a merging of Hinduism and superheroes. But unfortunately, the stakes of this one just don't really exist enough for me to care about this. It's great at the beginning when we're in the real world and we see this relationship between a boy and his father, but once we get to this mystical world, it just kind of loses me. It's not horrible by any means, it's just not as great as it could have been, unfortunately. 37 on my list is Float. Float is one of the spark shorts I'm the most torn over. On one hand, it's a really lovely allegory for parents of children with autism, but on the other hand, it does feel a little bit rushed and the pacing really bogs it down for me. It spends a little too long on moments that I don't feel are super important, and I wish it would spend that time fleshing out the relationship between this boy and his dad. I would have loved more instances of this child floating and embarrassing his dad, but actually just being really impressive. I generally like the animation of this one though, and there's definitely something there with the story. I just think it could have been much better with a little more time. 36 on my list is Knick Knack. Knick Knack is one of the weirdest looking films that Pixar has made, but that's not necessarily the fault of Pixar. It was made in 1989. That being said, it does look markedly worse than some of the ones that were made before it. But yeah, due to a lot of restrictions within the technology of 3D animation at the time, models ended up looking really glossy. This is why Pixar ended up making Toy Story to justify the shiny looks of the models, you know because toys are all shiny like. Knick Knack does a similar thing, but with, you guessed it, little Knick Knacks and trinkets. It's all about this horny little snowman who's trying to bang this like, hot lady figurine. I don't know how else to describe it. It's fine, and it has an original track by Bobby Farron in the background. Yeah, the don't worry, be happy guy. Blah, 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 blah. It's a perfectly fine short, and I loved it as a kid, but when put up against some of the other shorts on this list, it just doesn't compare. Coming in at 35 on my list is The Blue Umbrella. I think that The Blue Umbrella is just okay. Okay, but the animation is awesome. I love these Jock Tati-esque houses that are actively watching the whole short. In fact, all of the world building and the environments in this short are amazing. Uh, but story-wise, I'm just not that compelled. It just kind of feels like your average love story, uh, but they're umbrellas. And that just doesn't really work for me. I don't know, I just didn't care at all about these two umbrellas. Maybe if they gave them some more character traits, I would be more forgiving. But this just feels like Pixar trying to out-Pixar themselves. And I think whenever Pixar does that, because they have done it a few other times, it just doesn't work. 34th on my list is Party Central, the Monsters University short. Party Central has the exact same problem that Party Saurus Rex has, which is that most of the short is just the characters from the movie partying. The reason I have Party Central higher than Party Saurus Rex, however, is that it does actually kind of do something clever with the idea. It shows the characters from Monsters University in like that nerdy, dorky loser frat from the movie trying to throw a party, and they go about this by stealing a party through a human door. Ooh. You know, like the doors that go into the human world from Monsters, we've all seen Monsters, Inc. So there's plenty of shenanigans involved in walking through the human human world to steal the party from the cool frat. I guess where this short falls flat for me though is that I don't really love the characters from Monsters University. Now Monsters Inc is maybe one of my favorite movies of all time, so I'm not talking about those characters, but the original characters from Monsters University, I they're just kind of lame. So Party Central was kind of a hard sell for me. I find that in the original Monsters, Inc. film, the comedy is incredibly naturalistic and often comes from this really great dynamic that Mike and Sully have. While in Monsters University, so much of the humor is just, look at this funny monster. Isn't he funny? I don't know, not for me. This guy hates- Monsters University. 33 on my Pixar spree is Bernie. Hey. Bernie marks the point on this list where I start to really enjoy these shorts. Bernie sort of follows an older trend of the Pixar feature related shorts where they take place during the actual film and could have been scenes in the movie. So Bernie follows that one robot you see in one scene of Wally -E who's fixing a little light post outside of the ship. It's sort of a slapstick comedy type 
type thing where we just keep seeing this poor little robot getting fucked over and it's delightful. Honestly, I just don't mind living in the world of WALL-E for a little longer. It's a very endearing film and I like seeing all the robots fulfill their little tasks. And this short totally deserves to exist, even if at times it feels a little unnecessary. 32 on my list is Exploring the Reef. So I didn't watch Exploring the Reef until rather late into my marathon because I honestly thought it would be kind of boring. I did not expect it to actually be quite funny and for it to actually star Jean-Michel Cousteau. This short is essentially a spoof of a documentary about the coral reefs with Dory and Marlin and Nemo swooping in at any moment to distract Jean Cousteau. And I just love how different this short is from any of the rest of them. And it goes to show just how experimental early Pixar was. I don't know if other people would have enjoyed this as a kid, but I know that if I ever saw this as a kid, I would love it. It has the same vibe of like a live action episode of SpongeBob with like Patchy the Pirate. Albert Brooks is hilarious as Marlin and I know no one wants to hear it, but so is Ellen DeGeneres as Dory. I'm sorry, I know that she's a terrible person and probably evil, but she is quite good in Finding Nemo. The dancing at the end of this short is kind of when it falls apart for me. It feels very DreamWorks in all of the worst ways. Did someone say dancing? <laughs> Man, I'm sorry that DreamWorks is just getting dogged on in this video, but uh, they're not very good. But otherwise, this one rules. It has a really pro-environmental message about coral bleaching because, you know, we're so doomed that Marlin from Finding Nemo has to yell at us about this now. 31 on my list is Dante's Lunch. Coco is great and has now made me cry in movie theaters two times because they recently re-released it for some reason in theaters and you know I cried like a little bitch in the front row. And Dante's Lunch is also pretty great. I mean, it's not cry-worthy or anything, but it's a two-minute short. Why would I expect it to be? It follows Dante, the scruffy street dog from the film, as he tries to eat a bone that belongs to a skeleton. It's cute, and there's a really great motif of the papel picado hung in the sky for Day of the Dead reacting to the events of the film. I just wish it was longer. It's only two minutes, so of course it's very hard to get bored in that short of an amount of time, but I want to see more Dante content because he's a cute dog, that I love. 30 on my list is Lamp Life. Lamp Life is the most interesting of all the Toy Story short films because it actually adds something to the universe. Now, unfortunately, it adds something to one of my least favorite Pixar films, which is Toy Story 4. Despite any of my feelings about this movie, Lamp Life is pretty sweet. It shows little Bo Peep's journey through many different owners and how she decided to become a rogue toy god. That sounds so stupid when you say it out loud, but let's just blame Toy Story 4 for that and not Lamp Life. Most of this thing is done through a bunch of match cuts of Bo Peep at her lamp in different households that all treat her poorly until finally she ends up at the park where we meet her in the film. But I like this short. Much like Bernie, it's not totally necessary, but it does fill a small gap in the original film and is also totally worth a watch if you love Toy Story 4. 29 on my list is Carl's Date. Carl's Date is the first theatrical short since 2018? That's amazing. I I'm so glad that they brought back such a lovely tradition. Also, this one was way sweeter than I expected it to be. It's technically part of yet another Pixar short series on Disney Plus called Doug Days, and you know what? I'll say it. Doug is cute. I don't think that's a hot take at all, given how plastered he is on every piece of Up merch, but I think it's worth saying. I like Doug. He's a good character and a very funny representation of dog brain. In this story, in Carl's date, is so heartbreaking and really sweet. It shows Carl being asked out on a date by his neighbor and his numerous attempts at trying to prepare for something he's never done before. It represents his relationship with Ellie and how he comes to terms with finally moving on in his life. And it's just the kind of thing you love to see in a little epilogue to Up. And yeah, that's hilarious. It's also one of Ed Asner's final performances since his passing in 2021, and it's really nice to hear his voice again. 28 on my list is Lava. Listen, I like Lava. At times, hell, I even love it. But I do think it kind of gets a little more credit than it deserves. I'm sorry, I know it's like a fan favorite. 
it's just not my favorite. The song is fine, I guess, but I've sort of grown a bit of a disdain for ukulele music, probably because of a band with two people, um, a song about the ocean, and a certain YouTuber apology video. That's just a personal thing. If you play ukulele, uh, or you're someone I know who plays ukulele. I like when you do it. Lava is a very lovely short all in all, but I just kind of don't know anything about these volcanoes, and I don't really like that the song chooses to just forget to rhyme at certain points, and I've always found it a little weird that they don't show the volcanoes merging into one. That would be such a lovely moment, and they just kind of skip over it to a resolution with a little fade to white. These are nitpicks, but I think that they are also kind of valid criticisms of something that's lauded as like perfect very often. I don't know, I also hate when people say they don't like something because it's overhyped. As a Beatles fan, I've heard that argument way too much. So I'm sorry to stoop to that level, but it is crazy to me how lauded this one is when I think it's just fine. It's definitely good, and if it's your favorite, Rock on, girl. <laughs> 27 on my list is Red's Dream. This is the scariest looking shit ever. Just look at this clown. This one might be the saddest short that Pixar has ever made, and that is truly no small feat. This is a company that in its more recent years almost gets off on trying to make you cry, and this short was made before it even had that reputation. I do think it's important to mention, however, that this short is sad in a way that most Pixar films aren't. This one is sad on another level of existential dread, an overwhelming sense of futility. Essentially, it follows a unicycle named Red who is for sale at a bicycle shop. The short opens with this solemn jazz music and shots of a desolate, rainy city. This short was made notably before Pixar was very good at filling its environments with people and lush scenery, so this thing looks really dreary, much to its advantage. Red, much like the title suggests, has a dream, and that dream is to literally be used by this creepy clown. I love it. I think this short, in a subtle way, works as sort of a precursor to Toy Story 2. It represents the dread and deep unhappiness something can have when it's unable to fulfill its purpose. But unlike the Toy Story sequels, which sort of fight this deep sadness with themes of moving forward and helping others, Red's dream just ends with Red slowly hitting their head against the wall, overwhelmed by their own existential dread. There's something so beautifully sad about the ending of this film, and it's so much darker than any of these shorts. I love it very much. The 26th on my list is Riley's First Date. I did not expect to like Riley's First Date as much as I did, because while I really love that scene in Inside Out where we see Riley's parents' emotions, I didn't feel like it justified its own short. However, I was wrong. This thing is hilarious. And really endearing too. I mean, it even inspired a very mid-tier vine. Why is that vine on every compilation? It's not that Good. Anyway, Inside Out, turns out, is a good movie. Good thing they're not making a sequel to it years later, much like they did to many of my favorite Pixar films. Oh god. 25 on my list is Doug's Special Mission. I really love this type of short in Pixar's catalog. This totally could have been in up as a short introduction to Doug, but it works so much better as its own short. It shows Doug literally moments before we first see him in up and the shenanigans that occur as the other mean dogs try to get rid of him. It's funny, I've already sung Doug's praises plenty and I don't think I need to anymore, and it's short and sweet. In the 24th spot of my list is Loop. Loop is, from all accounts I've heard, a very great representation of autism, especially for nonverbal folks. As someone who's not on the autistic spectrum, I don't really have much to say about that aspect of the film and how great of a representation it is, but I will say that the relationship between the two main characters is incredibly wholesome, and I really like the tag at the end of the credits. It's a really sweet short. I'm not crazy about the animation style or character design, and I wish there was a little bit more time to flesh out Renee, the main character, and her friend Marcus. That's something I find interesting about these Spark shorts, though. They all only had about six months to create these shorts, so flaws like that are to be expected in some of them. This one, however, is much more forgivable due to its strong story and compelling themes. 23 on my list is Auntie Edna, or it, it might be Auntie Edna. 
who's to say? Nobody ever talks about The Incredibles 2, probably because it was a little too late, it kind of suffered from sequelitis and undid a bunch of character arcs from the first film, and I don't know, I feel like we all agree it didn't really quite stick the landing the same way the first one did. However, on a recent rewatch I kind of came around to Incredibles 2 and right along with it, I came around to Auntie Edna. Similarly to Jack-Jack Attack, the tie-in short with The Incredibles, it shows the hijinks that Jack-Jack gets up to when he's not on screen. I love this short for two main reasons. One, Jack-Jack, adorable. And two, I love Edna Mode. She's catty, she's hilarious, and her relationship with Jack-Jack is just so adorable. I don't know how I didn't know this, but I recently learned that she's voiced by Brad Bird, and that adds so much to my level of enjoyment. Other than that, I mean, yeah, nothing really happens in this, but it's so fun. Let me have this. <laughs> 22 on my list is Luxo Jr. Hey, it's the logo from Pixar! Luxo Jr. is probably the most famous of the pre-Toy Story shorts because, you know, they still use it for the logo and stuff. It's also where that ball comes from, you know that ball? It makes sense why this might be one of the most well-known early Pixar shorts. It is super impressive, even by today's standards. I feel like Luxo Jr. looks shockingly realistic, so does this ball and this desk. The problem with this one is that I feel like a lot of early Pixar shorts don't have very strong themes, unlike a lot of their later work does, but this one kind of gets away with it because it's just pretty cute and it's very short. Like really very little happens in this one. It's all about this relationship between this little lamp and this big lamp, and I mean, it's very endearing. Definitely worth a watch, though, just for animation history's sake. 21 on my list is One Man Band. One Man Band is awesome. <laughs> I loved this one as a kid, and while, yes, the animation hasn't aged super well, I still think on a story and comedy level, this one holds up. This little girl is hilarious, and I love this moment. And the rivalry between the two main characters is really funny and inventive. I love how unhinged each of their one-man bands get just to be owned by this little girl. 20 on my list. Oh, I can change it. It's 20. I should change it. Okay. What's a color I haven't used yet? I'm gonna use, like, this weird green. Number 20 on my list is Tin Toy. Number 20 on my list is Tin Toy. Ah, Tin Toy. The short that actually inspired Toy Story. Despite this... scary animation. I really like this one. Hell, I even think that fat ass baby is funny as shit. Me and my little cousin used to just crack up at how big this baby's diaper is. I mean, it's so funny. Tin Toy is about this little marching band toy and his fear of this scary baby with the big diaper. It's maybe the first Pixar short with a strong theme that dives into the ideas of a toy's obligation and all that jazz that they get into in the actual Toy Story films, but on its own, Tin Toy is really funny. I also love how they shove references to it in all the Toy Story films to pay homage to where it all started. What a great film. <laughs> 19 on my list is Partly Cloudy. Partly Cloudy mystifies me in how charming it is, given that it was directed by Peter Sohn, who directed two of the most panned Pixar films. While I haven't actually seen Elemental, I've only seen that really weird ad that Pixar made about the, like, live screening where they all went crazy for Claude. Yo, yo, yo! <laughs> But I have seen The Good Dinosaur, and I can speak to how forgettable that movie is, given that I forget about it regularly. But despite the film Sone would go on to make, Partly Cloudy is a really cute film. It's about a bunch of clouds that make the babies that storks deliver to families, which is a really great concept for a short film. The main cloud in the film makes really dangerous animal babies, which leads to some really great moments. <laughs> I'm not super big on the over-the-top cutesy style of the animation, but other than that, Partly Cloudy is a really sweet film that's definitely worth a watch. Just, uh, don't go watch The Good Dinosaur, I guess? 18 on my list is Lou. Lou is a really clever film about a lost and found monster beating the shit out of a little kid. It did play before Cars 3, which originally sort of lessened my opinion on it, but on a rewatch, I actually did grow to really appreciate this one. Especially when removed from the context 
context of having to watch the third Cars film. I'm sorry that I dislike Cars so much. I'll chill. I'm sorry. It's about how love and supporting a child and giving them activities can help a troubled kid, and I just love that. Part of me wishes that my bullies from when I was a kid were accosted by a living lost and found, but uh... You know, most of me just wishes that they have a failed relationship and an unfulfilling work life filled with tedium and misery. 17 on my list is out. Out is this close to being like perfect. Genuinely, like if it didn't have those weird space animals at the beginning and end, this would be much higher on my list. I don't know why they bother me so much, but essentially at the beginning and end of the film, there's this like space dog and cat that just come out of the ether and are like, oh, we're gonna watch a little tale about a guy. And it just kind of devalues the whole thing. It implies that they have something to do with the plot when I think that they just shouldn't, like, why should I care about these outside sources influencing the plot of the film that sort of just makes it less important for the characters? If that's true and they are the reason that all of this happens in Out and not because of, you know, human nature and the importance for this main character to come out to his parents, it just kind of pisses me off. Maybe they were just meant to be funny little bookends for the whole thing, but still, I don't like them. Out follows Greg, a closeted gay man that through a magical collar ends up switching bodies with his dog. As a dog, he does everything he can to prevent his parents from finding out about his boyfriend. At first, I wasn't sure if I was really gonna like the whole being transformed into an animal thing. That concept is just kind of played out by Disney and Pixar. But honestly, Honestly, in Out, I felt like it was used in a really clever way. Rather than just being an easy joke, they used it as a vehicle to let characters say things they would never say to each other. This scene with Greg's mother sitting alone outside of his house crying that Greg doesn't open up to them is very touching and justified all of the animal transformation nonsense. Out is great, and I love the animation style. It's sort of this 2D and 3D mixture. No, 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 no. It's not like Spider-Verse. It's like its own thing. Not everything has to be Spider-Verse. Guys, not everything has to be Spider-Verse. Guys, stop! Stop, stop. I like Spider-Verse, by the way. I'm just sick of it, like everyone just copying it. <laughs> Number 16 on my list is Ciao Alberto, and I was not expecting to like Ciao Alberto, but wow. I really enjoyed it. I think Luca is a pretty good movie, albeit I could go for a rewatch before I give my complete opinions about it, but this short is just so touching. I really related to it, too. It's about Alberto doing just about anything for his stoic boss's approval of him, and if that's not one of the most relatable and heartbreaking things to make a film about, I don't know what is. The ending is really adorable, too, but I won't spoil it because I think this one is actually really worth watching. I've known and I've been a kid who would do anything to prove himself but just can't seem to catch a break and seeing that dynamic in a Pixar film is something I think a lot of kids need to see especially to understand that even if some adults don't show it they can still be proud of you it's quite good number 15 on my list is day and night day and night was the first Pixar short film I saw in theaters that I distinctly remember but boy did it leave an impression on me this is a great concept and something I really love about this short is that animation is literally the only vehicle this story could be told in. I'm even having trouble relaying this story to you with words. That's how integral animation is to this story. The intertwining of 2D and 3D animation here is really clever, and the score is by Michael Giacchino, so you know it goes crazy. It's really well done, and a testament to the creativity that Pixar is capable of. Number 14 on my list is Wind. Out of all of the Spark shorts that I hadn't seen before making this video, I was the most blown away by wind. It's such a cool environment and explores magical realism in a way that you just don't see all too often. The world is built so seamlessly and at its core it has such a great relationship between a boy and his grandmother who just want to build a rocket to get out of this pit they're trapped in. If this was a video game, I would play it all the time. The world is just that cool. The ending is equally heartbreaking and beautiful, and I'd really love to see a feature made by Edwin Chang, the director of Wind, because he's proved he's more than capable of bringing to life bizarre and cool concepts like this. Number 13 on my list is Mike's New Car. This was by far my favorite short as a kid, and I don't think it's hard to see why. Billy Crystal and John Goodman have perfect chemistry. It's full of classic and memorable lines from Mike Wazowski. <laughs> It's like we've released a peddler. And it's just full of Mike Wazowski getting his ass beat. Ah! 
The score, of course, is amazing. I think Randy Newman's Monsters, Inc. score might be one of my favorite film scores of all time. It's just so charming. The characters are great. It's very short. There's very little not to love. Number 12 on my list is Pearl. Pearl looks like it would kind of suck, right? I mean, you look at this pink ball of yarn and you're like, ew, get that illumination looking garbage out of here. But underneath all of those preconceived notions you and I have, Pearl is really great. It's about misogyny in the workplace and bro culture and toxic masculinity. It's about Pearl, a young ball of yarn with a go-getter attitude, changing her personality to fit into her job. It's really funny and charming. The music is stellar and the ending is incredibly meaningful. Wow, I really just didn't expect to like Pearl as much as I did, but it ended up being a great introduction to Spark Shorts with nuanced themes that I hope that Pixar delves deeper into in the future. Number 11 on my list is Presto. Presto is five minutes of slapstick heaven. It follows a rabbit who wants a carrot and uses his magician owner's magic hat to get it at all costs. With a premise like that, who wouldn't want to watch this? It uses sound design better than any of the other Pixar shorts to create a more cartoonish and unhinged atmosphere. And the music matches perfectly too. I think it goes without saying this one is very Looney Tunes inspired. It's just nice to see Pixar do something so unapologetic slapstick cartoony and it's such a fun watch. All right, we're at the top 10 Pixar short films and honestly, I've been positive for a lot of this video. At least a lot of this list. I think I dwelled on the ones I don't like maybe a little too long, but I, I have some deeper dives on these top 10. If you're a big fan, you might have narrowed down some of these top 10s, uh, but I hope some of them come unexpected to you and, the, and I hope you're on the edge of your seat. Top 10 of the list. Wow, how exciting. Let's just jump into it. 10 on my list is Lifted. Something I love about Lifted is that it functions similarly to a comedy sketch. Lifted takes a funny idea, or as UCB would call it, the game of the scene, and spends the rest of the film expanding on it. The game is what if an alien was taking an abduction test, similar to how we take driving tests. And the entire short builds and expands on that idea in the funniest ways possible. It's so simple, which you'll see is a trait of most of my favorite favorite Pixar short films. Also, I love this big green stoic alien. He's awesome and so intimidating. Number nine on my list is Kitbull. If I were ranking these on a level of how emotional they made me, a Kitbull would easily be number one. The first time I watched this, I noticed that it feels like a remake and sort of reversal of the old Looney Tunes short Feed the Kitty, which was one of my favorite cartoons as a kid. The short shows a big gruff dog befriending and having a very strong emotional connection to a small little kitten. Funnily enough, this isn't the first time that Pixar has paid homage to this short. And it makes sense, Looney Tunes was a pioneer in visual storytelling in their cartoons and clearly an inspiration for a lot of these Pixar shorts. What I think sets Kit Bowl apart from that Looney Tunes cartoon, however, is its strong emotional core and deeply mature themes. This is a film about animal abuse and neglect and how two animals essentially trauma bond over how they've been abandoned and mistreated by the world. This film is really important for people to see because of those reasons, and while I think a lot of people would brush this film off due to its dark themes and imagery as not for kids, I think that makes it even more important for kids to see. Kid Bull is definitely the most tragic film on this list, but it also makes me incredibly hopeful. Hopeful that the world will see and heed its messages, hopeful that there are people in this world who care, and hopeful that Pixar will make more shorts like this. It's really fantastic. Number eight on my list is Jack Jack Attack. I mean, come on, baby comedy is inherently funny. How can you not just die laughing at a baby who literally warps through walls? I mean, that's just, that's comedy gold, dude. This along with Mike's new car and Mater and the Ghost Light is one of the only Pixar feature related films that is directed by the actual film's original director, and you can definitely tell. Jack Jack Attack is one of the only tie in shorts that reaches similar heights to the original film. Brad Bird, and this is not a hot take at all, is a fantastic director of animation. I love Kari, and I've met just so many people like her when I was in high school. I love how Jack Jack sings classical music, and yeah, I make an effort to rewatch Jack Jack Attack every time. I rewatch The Incredibles, and I think you should too. It serves as a really nice little epilogue. It's just that good. Number seven on my list is Jerry's Game. Jerry's Game was the first theatrically released short from Pixar, and you can really see the difference in quality from their previous short 
to this one. The company had grown quite a bit in size. At this point, they were in a collaboration with Disney that would turn into a billions of dollars acquisition, and they had a lot more to prove at this point in their career. I say career like they're one person. It's a lot of people. And boy, did they prove it. Now, say what you will about A Bug's Life, but Jerry's Game is one of the best pieces of visual storytelling that Pixar has ever made. And the best part about it is that it's just so simple. It follows a man playing chess against himself. What more do you Need. It's funny, fast-paced, witty, it has a great tag, and it's everything you would want from a Pixar short film. Number six on my list is Burrow. Holy shit. Burrow fucking rules. This is the most adorable thing I've ever seen, and it also has some really lovely themes interlaced throughout it as well. The rabbit is one of the most likable protagonists in any of these shorts. He comes into everything with such clear wants, and he has to grapple with the fact that living underground means having to share the space with others. The music is all inspired by Mozart, which adds a lot to the whole atmosphere and feel of this thing. I don't even want to spoil the ending of this one, because I think it's probably the highest one on this list that most most people have just never seen, and that's because it was supposed to release theatrically with Soul, but neither Soul nor Burrow got a theatrical release because of the pandemic. But check this one out if you get the chance. It's just so adorable. Number five on my list is For the Birds. For the Birds has cracked me up since I was a little kid. Its comedic timing is just perfect. Similar to Lifted, it reads more like a comedy sketch to me. It follows a lot of the same conventions, which is why it works so well. And the fact that it does so without any dialogue and is this funny is mind-blowing to me. It makes sense that this played before Monsters, Inc. too, because that is one of the funniest movies of all time. 2000, I guess, was just a very funny year for Pixar. Hmm, it's probably Bush. <laughs> Four on my list is Piper. Piper, hands down, is the best animated film on this list. And maybe that Pixar has ever made. Just look at this seaweed. It's so real looking. It looks like something I would pick up and chase my cousin with as a kid. It's that realistic. Everything about this film is just so heartwarming. It's a story about a little bird and his fear of the ocean. And something that I really appreciate about Piper is that it actually has a full character arc, which is something I feel a lot of the Pixar shorts often end up missing, mostly due to their sheer brevity. And yes, I know technically Bounden has a character arc, but what Piper does such a good job at is showing us that. No weird jackalope comes along to tell Piper not to fear the ocean. Piper learns through perseverance and trying new things that the ocean is nothing to be afraid of. I don't know why this turned into me shitting on Bounden again, but uh, fuck that movie, I guess. Piper rocks, and that shot of the little bird running off into the sunset at the end just gives me the chills. How lovely. Number three on my list is Your Friend the Rat. Your Friend the Rat is one of those films that just never gets old. It's easily the most original of all of the feature-related shorts in that it's essentially a video essay about the history of rats told by Remy and Emile. If you've seen my Ratatouille musical video, you know how I feel about Ratatouille. It's easily my favorite Pixar film. Well, maybe not easily, but it's definitely my favorite Pixar film. And while yes, there may be a bit of bias here. I think it's fair to say that Your Friend the Rat actually is this good. The dynamic between Remy and Emile is hilarious. The constant changing of animation styles to portray different events in history is genius and incredibly endearing. The song slaps. We'll follow you to Mars. No, no. It's stuck in my head every time I see a rat, frankly. We'll follow you to Mars or wherever you people go. Rats are right there down below. They do a Rankin Bass parody at one point. Like, how great is that? There's also a reference to French filmmaker Francois Truffaut, which my little film major heart loves. This is a fantastic history short that all kids and all adults should see. It's charming, it's funny. Patton Oswalt is just being himself, which is delightful. There's nothing really to dislike here. Go watch it and learn about the history of rats. It's great. Number two on my list is Bao. The baby is bow. The baby is bow. The baby is bow. There's not much about bow I can say that hasn't already been said. It's a really touching tale about overprotective parenting. The animation is some of Pixar's best, and I don't say that lightly. This thing looks pristine and stylistically is gorgeous. The food looks fire. The score is amazing. I cried like a little baby. Bao is just a great film about empty nesting that I imagine I will only love more the older I get. And the baby 
is bow. And finally, the number one spot on my list is La Luna. I wasn't expecting this at all when I started this video, but I have to say, La Luna is one of Pixar's most beautiful films. There is just so much that I love about this short, from the animation style, the strong relationships at its core, the whimsical premise, it's just so fantastic. This is one I hesitate to talk about too much too, because I truly believe that everyone who hasn't seen this should go and watch it. It takes magical realism in such a lovely direction, and despite it taking place half the time on the moon, it's one of Pixar's most grounded films. The director of this went on to direct Luca, and I think that's pretty obvious for a myriad of reasons. I mean, the dad in both of them is literally the same guy. La Luna is one of my favorite representations of carving your own path and becoming your own person. In a way, it's a coming-of-age film. My favorite aspect by far is the simple symbolism used with each character's hats, the main character's dad and grandpa each wanting the boy to wear his hat differently. And when he starts to become his own person and make his own decisions at the end, he does this. And I just get the chills every time. The way that this film so perfectly conveys character dynamics and relationships without any dialogue is something to aspire to. I want to let this film speak for itself, though. I think everyone should go and watch it right now. Well, after this video ends, this video is almost over, I promise. But go watch La Luna after this. It's Pixar's best short film. Well, that was it. 55 short films. <sighs> that was a long one. What have we learned? Pixar, uh, they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good, right? Yeah, they have their slew of garbage, but honestly, I felt like these shorts were incredibly consistent. Also, I think it should be more common for directors and studios to produce original short films. Wes Anderson has a few coming out, which is awesome, and I wish that more studios and people would take shorts more seriously. They're truly a really great format for compelling stories and deserve more love. So go watch some short films and tell me all about them in the comments. I I'd love to hear people's opinions on them, and I want people to get into the habit of watching them more often. They're great. Anyway, go do that while I go seethe about cars for a couple hours. Hello. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know I, I, I am elsewhere, and I got a haircut. I've been going through just a lot of life things, so that's why I, I didn't upload in the month of November. However, and I'm going to say this in the outro so I hold myself to it, I am hoping uh, to drop two videos this month. Very excited about it. I did hint at it in a previous video, so some of you might be able to guess what it is. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, I did read a lot of the recommendations for musicals in the last video, and I got a lot of really good ones, so keep those coming. And I know this video is not about musicals. Uh, what's up with that, Max? Mostly, I just wanted to experiment with something else. I love talking about movies. I love Pixar, I love short films, I have a lot of love for the topic, so I just wanted to talk about something else, branch out a little bit. I made another video like this where I watched all of something, where I watched all of the Buddies films earlier this year, uh, so if you haven't seen that and you want to see me actually go through hell, you should check that one out, it was very fun to make. Oh yeah, I also put three short films that I really love down in the doobly-doo that I think you should go check out. All three of them are incredibly different and they're all very good, so I highly recommend that you go watch watch those and, and tell me what you think about them. I love them so. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I have an announcement at the end of the next video, so, so stay tuned for that. I'm very excited to drop that video. That'll come soon. No Happy December, and goodbye. Just a goodbye. A tedium when you see goodbye. that ICBM, and the party will be come as you are. We will all burn together when we burn. There'll be no need to stand and wait your turn When it's time for the fallout And St. Peter calls us all out We'll just drop our agendas and adjourn